fun of this. Researchers condemn the rise of fascist ideologues after students send mocking responses to an LGBTQ survey, which is fascist, just so you know. Of course. Academic researchers condemn students' irreverent and offensive responses to an LGBTQ survey, claiming the pushback indicates fascist ideologues are living inside the house of engineering and computer science. <laughs> it's really sad because these are supposed to be like the smart logical, practical people out there. Mm -hmm. This is not good. In an article for the Bulletin of Applied Transgender Studies, <laughs> acad academics from Oregon State University wrote about their shock at receiving sarcasm and mockery in response to their research into undergraduate LGBTQ students studying in STEM fields. The team claimed 50 of the 349 respondents to so their questionnaire on the topic contained slurs, hate speech, direct targeting of the research team or direct targeting of the research team, labeling them malicious respondents. They adapted their project to examine how the joke responses, quote, relate to engineering culture by framing them within larger social context, namely the rise of online <laughs> fascism. Of course. Yeah. So they were trying to do research on LGBTQ people in the STEM fields. They ended up switching their research to the fascists that made jokes and their responses mm -hmm. back to people. Oh, uh, let's see. The result was a paper titled attack. <laughs> the result was a paper titled attack helicopters and white supremacy, interpreting malicious responses to an online questionnaire about transgender undergraduate engineering and computer science student experiences. <laughs> what a catchy title. Oh, it's a catchy title. The paper broke the responses down into themes like demographics, diversity, equity, and inclusion, gender, anti-trans, anti-queer, racism, anti-Semitism, and online hate subculture references. Several, answer, several, several answers contain profanity and other offensive and obscene language, and many referenced memes. Oh, no. According to the article, when the malicious subjects were asked to fill out demographic data, 12 respondents indicated their gender as being related to a helicopter or aircraft ranging from an Apache helicopter to a V-22 Os V-22 Osprey. Well, how are they? How do they know? Who gets to decide that? How do they get to decide? Yeah. Come on. That makes no sense. In the section declaring one's disabilities, responses range from claiming to be illiterate to lamenting, my country is run by communists. That's what's listed as a disability. <laughs> <laughs> or even declaring that identifying as transgender is a disability in itself due to the inability to come to terms with biological reality. Ooh, that's fascism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> One respondent claimed to identify as a gift card <laughs> as their gender. Under racial and ethnic identities, they said, I'm an ethnic gift card. And for disability, <laughs> the answer was, I don't have enough gift cards. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. More of this. <clears throat> As it, Okay. It's like they think that their responses are ridiculous as if the questions aren't ridiculous. Yeah. Like ridiculous questions deserve ridiculous answers. It's, it's true. You a know? Ask ridiculous questions. Get ridiculous Prizes, as they say. And they sit there thinking that they're somehow superior. They asked it's, around the found out. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's right. Uh, let's see. Other responses to questions. Listen, AAFO. I, I went through here to cut out all of the fluff, and the entire piece is just glorious like this the yeah. whole time. Other responses to questions. Oh, keep going. <clears throat> other responses to questions about identity rejected the researcher's project entirely with answers such as, quote, my skin color is not important. That's fascism. Come on, man. These questions are stupid. Everyone is a grab bag of genetics from all over the world. That's fascism. And what else do you want to know? What I ate for breakfast? This question is unnecessary. How many times have you gone to the bathroom in your <laughs> <Yeah>. life? <laughs> Quote, online memes associated with white nationalist and fascist movements were present throughout the data. So memes associated with white nationalists and fascists. It was probably those Pepe the Frog memes or something mm -hmm. like that. 
That's what I'm betting. Uh, we're present throughout the data alongside memes and content referencing gaming and nerd culture. The researchers further claimed the research team declared that the mockery they received. See, this is where it gets serious. <clears throat> They declared that the mockery they received had a profound impact on morale and mental health, <laughs> particularly for one transgender researcher who was already in therapy for anxiety and depression regarding online anti-trans rhetoric. Mm. Um, mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> you know, if you're, if you have to go to therapy because you see too much online anti-trans rhetoric and it's creating such a big problem in your life, I would recommend stop going online. <laughs> Go outside and touch grass. Yeah. Because you know what? The algorithms found out what you were looking at and they're going to keep feeding it to you. All right. So just also if imagine that's where your problems from stop. Imagine asking questions and then you don't like you <clears throat> don't get the responses that you expect. So this is really a matter of like unmet expectations, mm -hmm. which are your fault. They are for having the expectations. You should send out questions. And be curious to know what the answers are. That's what the questions are for. Yep. Not to get a specific answer. And then you have anxiety. Well, okay. You have anxiety about it. You know, <laughs> because they act like that they already know the answers. And so when they get things that they don't expect, then they have to shift the focus from being like, from being curious about why they would get responses like that to automatically deeming them as unacceptable, fascist, mm -hmm. racist. That's why they come up with all these, just these instant attacks on you personally as a person rather than trying to argue the ideas. Well, it's also, if you thought their questions were dumb, you're a fascist. You're shut down at that point. Right. You know, and, um, they shift the study to that, like what you're saying, because they couldn't just put, well, a large portion of the respondents uh, thought that this was unnecessary. You know, they couldn't, they couldn't do that in their study. And um, it's, it's sad what happened because the uh, paper claimed that managing the study's data collection caused significant personal distress and time had to be taken off the project to heal from traumatic harm. <laughs> Of having to read students' responses in the survey. Mm. Stop reading them. <laughs> yeah. Um, these people, you know what? They they need to, let's just say it in the way that my, uh, my mom would say it. They need to grow a spine. All right? They need to get a backbone and get over it. People said mean things and you don't like it. And it, it damaged your fragile little worldview bubble that you've been living in. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm sorry that them having different opinions than you is happening to you right now. They have a fix for this though, Nate. Oh, <laughs> don't, they got the a fix for this. The next, the, the scholars concluded that malicious responses indicate that fascism has become a common ideology in an engineering and computer science academia. They suggested the counter response should be social justice, STEM education or STEM. <laughs> that includes quote perspectives, on online hate, radicalization, and center anti-colonial, intersectional, solidarity, organizing as its opposition. So now part of your STEM degree, folks, part of, before you can get a degree in science, technology, uh, engineering, or mathematics, you also have to be schooled in social justice, learning about how your participation in online hate radicalization and your anti-colonial intersectional solidarity <laughs> is oppressing yeah. people. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you can't do math. You see this, because is, if you don't, if you don't understand that, if you don't get how math is racist, how can you get a math degree? True. <laughs> this is kind of sad because this is one of the areas of academia it's, that hasn't been completely destroyed yet by mm, all of this woke yeah. BS. And now they're coming in and saying, oh, we see that people had sarcastic responses to our woke BS survey that we gave them. So therefore, what we need is a social justice STEM education, just like what we talked about with the woke California math. You know, we need to go in there and teach them how engineering 
has had disproportionate impacts on indigenous people or something like that. And, uh, and, and then yeah. you'll be able to get your STEM degree. Their answer is like, we don't mm -hmm. like what we're seeing. So our, our solution is to indoctrinate people to believe the way that we believe because we don't like their answers. Uh, they, <sighs> they claim their research methods used anti-fascist and trans queer methodologies that transform the raw data. <laughs> Like a scientific methodology mm, yeah. is part of the scientific method to make effective interventions and transformations to our programs and institutions. They described anti-fascism in particular as a framework that connects contemporary fascist movements to the foundation of the U.S. as a racial project, noting elsewhere that white supremacy remains ubiquitous <laughs> in the United States. Yeah, you can just say that. I guarantee you it's because people use that freaking... Pepe meme, that mm. frog somewhere. It's going to be about a frog. Mm -hmm. And the frog's gay. It's, well, it's the only non-gay frog. It was a, immune oh. to atrazine. Mm, that's that's right. It didn't get turned gay. You know? Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. You know? that's a, it's, the People need to live their own lives, and that includes frogs. Okay, I just want to be clear about this. Just reading, like... Oh, this is just so mm. infuriating. So... The thing that remember we were talking last night, you watched that uh, the Barbie review. We had well, but hang on, Barbie. like let yeah. finish this real quick oh. because you, you well okay. You so it says important. here, saying the solution for the rise of fascism is to change education itself. The team wrote, and see this is what they've been doing, right? We knew that it was going to be a slippery slope, and all the all the like real academics have come out and spoke out about this that have lost their jobs, etc. This is the this has been the goal the whole time, right? They they want to, first of all, if they, if you, they disagree with you, they label it as something that uh, they can link back to Hitler and the Nazis and Jews, right? So they'll call whatever it is fascist. Mm -hmm. They don't agree with you. And then they tell you exactly what they're going to do with some fancy words as to make it seem like they're the smart ones that, are, that need to re-educate people. So it, they said, the team wrote, quote, the university at its most ideal, can be envisioned as a central site for revolutionary struggle. <laughs> a site where we can work to educate for critical consciousness using a pedagogy of liberation. That they'll, They're telling you exactly, like these are indoctrination camps for revolution. That you pay a bunch of money to go to. That you pay to. a bunch of yeah. money to go to where we will retrain your brain, we will manipulate you into thinking the way that we do and believing all the lies that we tell. If they destroy the STEM fields, uh, like they've destroyed essentially everything else, that's it's really bad. Exactly, Copperhead. It's word salad. It is. None of those it's, things meant anything. It's literally word salad. What you're left after the sentence that Charlie just read is trying to figure out what the heck he just said. And while you are sitting there looking confused, the person who just said it to you feels amazing. Yeah. Because you are confused. And it's your fault that you're confused and that you're not as smart as they yeah, are sit all while they were talking right. about this. Okay. And then you say, hey, can you clarify that for me? Like, <laughs> I have to explain that to you. Why don't you come join my class and then you'll <laughs> learn something. Yeah. What, uh, it, this is something we talked about last night uh, with that Barbie movie and... Uh, with a lot of things going on right now, I think people are so hungry for some type of meaning and purpose in their lives that they're creating these str these struggles. Like, listen, if Ben Shapiro's review of the Barbie movie is true, <clears throat> then it is presenting a completely false narrative of the struggle that women are going through in America at the moment to a bunch of children that are going to see the movie. And, and not that there aren't struggles, not that everything's perfect, uh, but... For instance, not the, that uh, some men don't oppress women. Yeah. Because that does happen. And we, some women oppress men. We all know that as oppressors. Like we can tell <laughs> you. Okay. What I think is happening is people are just hungry for some type of meaning. And they've seen, they've looked up to people uh, like people in the civil rights movement and the women's suffrage movement. And they don't have anything to fight for right now because they don't have the proper principles of like self ownership and individualism. They could be fighting for that if they wanted to actually be fighting the true revolutionary struggle, they could be fighting for individual rights. Uh, but instead, they want to pretend like they're still fighting through the women's suffrage movement because it makes them feel important. And so they, 
they drill down on every single little thing, keep fighting. And same thing with like people who still want to be in the civil rights movement. Uh, very, there are valid things that still happen, but we're not still living in the 60s right now. We're not living in the 1860s right now either. Uh, but I think people have looked up to those folks the, their entire lives and they want to be the next generation. Even if there's nothing like that going on right now, they'll make it up. They'll act like it's going on. They'll, they'll cosplay the movement uh, so they can feel important about themselves. And um, that's slightly dangerous. It's not great. 